Salutations everyone, this is Razor giving you guys another Overwatch patch update. This one heading only to consoles, which is very interesting. There was no inclination that there would be any differences between the console and PC versions of the game, but this nerf is coming to Torbjorn and his turret especially. There have been a long list of complaints about Torbjorn's turret and that it's too powerful and the game's director um, has heard those complaints and find them to be uh, reasonable. And he's getting a nerf um, in mid to late July. Uh, this will be coming out for the PS4 and the Xbox One. And the nerf is Torbjorn's turret damage will be reduced by 30%. He will remain the same in the PC version of Overwatch. Now, um, of course, there are differences in uh, the metadata that we've seen um, from console and PC players, and I know, um, obviously, in the comment section of this video, there's going to be plenty of people saying, uh, because PC players are better, PC Master Race, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of people think that console players shouldn't even be allowed to play Overwatch because it taints their Master Race and their pure blood. But, um... There are definitely differences um, between the communities. Um, you take a look at um, the Widowmaker nerf, and that was to address uh, the power that she was putting out on PC um, was uh, not just negligibly higher than it was in console, but uh, c considerable. Um, it wasn't, you know, a comp very, very drastic in that it was, you know, night and day from PC to console. Um, but that was why it was addressed, because of um, how powerful she was on, on PC, according to some folks. And her, like, say, damage per shot it was higher on PC uh, than it was on console. When you look at the data, we also see a little bit of fluctuations in how other characters perform. Um, some do better or worse, on depending on the platform, or do more or less damage. And maybe there's even a, a difference in what characters get chosen more. Um, the characters that we see, I think, all the time in an Overwatch lobby. Um, Torbjorn's very, very prevalent, but I would say the most prevalent ones would be Roadhog and Reaper. Because they, they can output the most damage. They are the biggest killers in the game. And, uh, you know, the Reaper plus press Q to get play of the game with that Death Blossom. So, uh, you know, we see a few characters that are always in, in a lobby, and I think McCree is in that same uh, category as well, but with his nerf on PC, uh, I don't know, uh, when, you, when we take a look at the data, how that has affected his certain performance. So, with this specific change coming to console, I think it comes into question, is console beginning going to be getting that Widowmaker nerf that we thought was going to be coming um, in an upcoming update where they nerfed McCree and Widowmaker. Obviously, McCree doesn't really make a much of a difference between PC and comps because that fan hammer at close range is going to hit no matter what controller scheme you're using. So I think we can assume that McCree is going to be getting the nerf um, that it got on PC. So, but who knows if Widowmaker is going to be getting that same treatment. As far as Torbjorn being a problem, uh, his, his turrets are very powerful. Uh, especially when you have multiple ones that you have to deal with, uh, especially on defense when um, when you're when you're on attack and you're trying to get into Temple of Anubis and there's two, three, four, five Torbjorn turrets, things can get quite messy. Or I mean, obviously, depending on the map, it is very very um, specific to how well some players can perform. Based on the layout of the map, what kind of line of sights that we have? Is, is there ver verticality? Is there you know sniper sniper positions? Is there easy defendable corner for Torbjorn to put the turret in, or a bastion to uh, put in turret mode? The Reinhardt defending him. So you know the maps definitely play a role in how good uh, a certain strategy can be on average. I can't stress that enough on average. Sure, someone could go Torbjorn without a turret and go 50 and 0. That is within the realm of possibility, and it doesn't matter what the character is or the situation, someone's always going to say that it can work. And it can, but we're talking about averages, we're talking about your average players, your average lobbies. Ranked mode isn't out yet, so we don't get to really see the differences between those communities at this current uh, time. But we do know that this patch is going to be specifically on console, 
to the PS4 and Xbox One, giving a 30% reduction to the Torbjorn turret. And uh, being someone who doesn't play Torbjorn a lot, often because he's already chosen on my team and I like using other characters more, um, he is very strong. I found you know easy success with this character and is one of the, easily one of the easiest characters to play as and have success. Because all you have to do is put that turret in a good position, maybe defend it, uh, maybe you know heal it, use your your uh, primary and alternate fire accordingly, and hopefully you know you have the right composition or you're not against the the best team in the world, and you can have success. Um, it's it's very easy to do with Torbjorn because of the the turret um, auto locks incredibly fast, and because of the power that it does and the different types of uh, accuracies of players when it comes from platform to platform um, makes the problem a more prevalent issue apparently on consoles and they're going to be making this change. Now when it comes to Overwatch it's a fantastic game. Uh, some people would even say that it's perfect, some people would say yeah, it's close to perfect and regardless of which side of the argument you're on it is, at the very least, incredibly impressive how balanced the game was at launch. We had that long, closed beta that only a few people were privy to, but um, it, it, they made changes, and I think we're going to see continual changes um, with, within specific characters, as well as with the competitive seasons. They're going to make different changes to different timings of things, but... Um, on PC, where mouse and keyboard allows greater precision, <clears throat> some people would say it's better, some people would say it's easier, whatever it is, um, the character Torbjorn can throw out a lot of damage and kind of throws the things out of balance as a whole, but on console it seems to be a more of an issue and you can make your stance uh, based off of that info however you would like. But the uh, fact of the matter is, he's definitely one of the stronger characters because of his turret. And uh, if you get in that Molten Core, and if you have two, three, four Torbjorns out on one team, which I think we've all faced no matter what platform we're on or on what map, we've all faced that and there's always one going Molten Core, and it can be rough, it can be a rough going. So I think we're still going to be seeing changes uh, made to the game. As far as what I think balances should be made in the future, the Torbjorn turret was definitely higher on the you know, this hypothetical list. Another one, I think we would have to address Roadhog and his dominance because his chain hook has a very, very short cooldown, and that might need to be addressed because of just the amount of power that he's able to put out at close range, as well as absorb damage from anybody who wants to take him out. Obviously, there are counter play styles to things. Like I said, there are no hard counters, but there are characters that are more uh, in tuned to fight a specific other character or fit a specific role. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is the change uh, that is going to be made to console, whether you like it or not, no matter how you feel. But that's what's happening, and we're going to see if this makes uh, a positive impact uh, or not. Of course, there will be uh, more in-game testing through Blizzard, I'm sure, but this patch will be coming out in mid to late July.